what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And today is going to be a treat, Andy Crustadina, Orbit Media. I will formally introduce Andy in a second. And I always like to point out other episodes people should check out. Um, and along these lines of, you know, conversion and websites and agencies, people should check out the uh, episode I did with Todd Tasky. He talks about actually the do's and don'ts when uh, about selling your agency. And he runs a Second Bite podcast. Uh, so check that one out. It was really good. Um, how to remove friction from your sales process uh, with John Doherty, founder and CEO of Credo and the intersection between comedy and business. I geek out, Andy, on comedy. And so, you know, I typically don't have comedians on the podcast, but I, you know, had one of my favorites, Elon Gold on with his good friend who's CEO of Get Visible, uh, Jason Cement. And that was a, a, a fantastic one as well. Um, and before we get into Andy, this episode is brought to you by Rise 25. At Rise 25, we help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships. Uh, and we do that by helping you run your podcast. You know, for me, Andy, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. I found no better way over the past decade to profile the people and the companies and their thought leadership. Uh, that I respect on my podcast and share it with the world. So if you've thought about podcasting, I think you should. If you have questions, you can go to rise25.com, email us. We're happy to answer any questions. My business partner and I have both been doing it for over a decade. And I'm excited to introduce Andy Crescidini. He's the co-founder of Orbit Media, which is an award-winning 40-person digital agency in Chicago. Um, we used to live right down the street from each other at one point. And um, over the past 20 years, Andy has provided digital marketing advice to over thousands of businesses and has written countless articles on content strategy, SEO, visitor psychology, analytics before it was even popular. He's been doing this for decades. And he's also authored the book, uh, Content Chemistry, the Illustrated Handbook for Content Marketing. And Andy, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me on, Jeremy. I'm excited to be here. You know, just, you know, I, I listened to another um podcast that you did, an episode you did. And it I wouldn't say it was a, a heated debate, but it was a debate. And I love when people kind of disagree with each other and have differing opinions. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said, you know, I, I just, I, I have a different take on this. And so um, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to go through several websites and, and Andy does not necessarily know what I'm going to pull up. We, we prepped a little bit, but um, I'm going to share um, one of the debates that you were having uh, since mm -hmm. you're an expert in uh, all these things, website conversion, analytics, SEO, is about messaging, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned on there, like one of your, I don't know if it was your favorite book, but you were reading Breakthrough Advertising at the time. And I geek out on direct response as much as sure. anyone. Mm -hmm. And this debate was about um, the messaging. Do you make it clever? Do you make it, do you go straight to the point? Like if you look at yours sure. um, here, you know, you're like, we're an award-winning Chicago web design <laughs> development company, right? Mm -hmm. And this conversation around, well, do you talk about the value first and then what you do? Or do you talk mm -hmm. about just what you do? And you're, you were saying, well, you want someone to hit the page and, and really realize if they're in the right place. Okay. So I, you yes. know, this is yours, get a website that's easy to update, drives conversions and capture your story. It's time to love your website again. Show me the portfolio and you have pages and pages of a portfolio. So and we're going to go through some of these because we'll go through real time and we'll go through your page too and some of the thought process. And this will help mm -hmm. people think through their own website and company. But sure, I'm going to bring up this, you know, ours, which mm -hmm. is because we've had this debate internally and, and honestly, we're not sure. OK, um, you know, to be transparent, do you know, this is the value driven what we do for people, right? Create right. a referral and client pipeline and, and more below it's we help businesses through a done for you pot, easy button for your podcast. So sure. I'd love you to tear this apart, you know, and, and what you think. No problem. Okay. So it sounds a bit like this. It's a classic debate. It's like, do you lead with features or do you lead with the benefits? As in like, do we want to tell people straight up in as few words as possible, the category of the business that we're in, what we do for a living, or should we go to more, 
the emotional side of it. What is the outcome of this? What's the benefit of working with us? So you've led with the benefit. It's like how a B2B business can create a referral and client pipeline. So you're basically uh, describing the outcome rather than the path to get there. So what this assumes and any website that has a header, that's called the H1 header in HTML, uh, that does not explicitly say what the business does as in the names the service, is you assume that the visitor will go deeper uh, or you assume that the visitor has been here before or you're assuming that the visitor has been referred to this website by someone else who is you know, word of mouth. If those things are not true, then you have a disadvantage because the visitor who lands here and doesn't yet know what you do, doesn't see what you do. There's also a search disadvantage because you're not telling the search engine the business category that you're in. People are not searching for B2B business, create referral client pipeline. It's not likely the key phrase that you'd ever hope to rank for. Uh, even if you did rank for that, it doesn't really indicate strong intent. You know, it's not like podcast production, management, and promotion. So it's a, it's a, in fact, every marketing idea should be properly described as, in fact, just hypothesis. I actually don't know. No one really knows. You'd have to test and find out, and you could easily test and find out. But the thesis is, or the hypothesis here is that uh, be clever, be weird, be cool, get to the benefits, you know, be, um, use marketing speak and taglines. But do that after you are explicit about what you do. Because the first question that every visitor has to every web, every web page, and there's a true story in the life of every one of your visitors, is am I in the right place? And when you just take those few words to pass what we call the backyard barbecue test, if I met you at a backyard barbecue and I asked you what you do and you said, I help B2B businesses create a referral pipeline, I wouldn't really know what you do yet. So that's the idea. Be explicit, right. be clear, and then be clever. Yeah. No, I love it. So uh, anyways, well, um, because it's not, you know, you have to actually have an intent of learning more or scrolling down. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to, so thanks for, for pointing that out. Cause there's a lot of different, and, and you know, everything's a test. So you have to test it. Right. And like you said, yep. it depends where someone's coming from. If you're driving them from, you know, a piece of content or an ad, they may already know who you are. That's and right. So yep. it, it all depends, but Let's go through because you obviously have thought this through. You've done this mm -hmm. thousands of times. Um, and, um, you know, I was looking at you also have this service page checklist that you go through that you talk about. Um, so I want to walk through yours for a second. And sure. maybe just and you could just tell me to scroll down, but just walk through some of the elements, why you have them and maybe mistakes people make of not having or. Uh, having certain things on there. So no problem. First and foremost, you're zoomed in a little bit. So you're on like the tablet view, which I know from my analytics is not the most popular view, not the most popular device from this. So your screen size is, is, is a, uh, is a responsive website. So you, there's a couple of things here that look a bit different than what most people would see. doesn't matter. The navigation labels are descriptive. It says web design and development, analytics and optimization, portfolio, blog, about so you can tell at a glance what we do. That's one, as we just said. Also, my header, my homepage headline passes the backyard barbecue test. Chicago web design and development. And I've added a tiny bit of evidence to it to support the assertion that we do this well, award-winning. So I'm differentiated a little bit and I'm explicit right up front. I have a call to action that says, show me the portfolio because I know that visitors who go to the portfolio are more likely to, to become a lead. Again, that's analytics driven, so that's the idea. Below that, I've got a little like a before and after thing. We're reconsidering this. Um, it has a tiny testimonial and an example of what the, what the site looked like before we redesigned and then after we redesigned. Yeah. We why are you rethinking it? I, I like it, but why? Um, the reason is that these, these are real examples and they're a bit explicit. The visitor who has an opinion about the design we did may not dig deeper. If we made that more abstract, like some kind of illustration that just shows more generally a web design process, that the visitor won't form an opinion about the work itself yet because we, this is an insanely prominent part of our site. It's the top of the homepage. So, um, you know, that's a photograph from a client's website. There's a percentage of visitors who might see that and think that we do what that website suggests. We don't do that. We do the site itself. Anyway, what I like about this though is the face and the name, the face and the name and the um, testimonial underneath each. So as you, as you keep scrolling down, this page is basically designed to, to show evidence bunch of recent web design projects, answer questions, me describing the ideal process for building websites and how, you know, how they interact with the psychology of a visitor. I did that in video. So that's upgraded. And when you scroll down, you see more evidence, a number, thousands of websites, and the kind of the bullet lists of the boxes that a good site must check. 
a lot of considerations, right? Miss even one of these and your website will be a failure, more or less. Below that, I've got a testimonial. The testimonial has been upgraded from text to video. That's a client gushing about our services. Even if they don't watch the video, we overlaid on top of the video a little quote. So at the glance, the scan visitor doesn't have to watch the video to see that this is strong evidence. Video thumbnails, very powerful, very important. And if you scroll down this, you're basically you're moving down the page where this page is sort of emulating a sales conversation. People always ask us, who might I work with? These are the people. You're looking at the faces of my team. That's, of course, differentiation. We're the only company with these people. A good way to look at a website is just to ask yourself, like, is there anything on this that is totally unique to us? Or is everything on my page just super generic that any company, including a startup born yesterday, could show? The answer is no. No other company can show these things I'm showing you. They don't have that portfolio or those testimonials or these team members. So um, that's another. And here's another kind of blockbuster client. We did a bunch of uh, work with Ben with Vienna Beef's a, a client of ours, and you can see a, a testimonial from someone at Vienna Beef. And then as you go down, it just sort of emulates that sales conversation. I know what clients need to know, so I know what they're going to ask. I know these these page blocks are in a general order that answers those questions. It's like, how do I improve conversion rates? How do we use data to help inform decisions? Where does keyword research fit into our process? And throughout, you're finding calls to action. Not calls to action like a buy button, because that's a different psychology, but low, low commitment call to actions, like start a conversation with a web with a strategist. So, you know, it's it's uh basically this is an example of a page that guides you through a prioritized uh, series of messaging that is aligned with a visual hierarchy. That's what web design is, creating a visual hierarchy that goes from answer, evidence, answer, evidence, answer, evidence, call to action. Um, and it, we generated 600 leads last year, way more than we needed. We only did 55 projects. So we're in the lucky position of being able to really turn down most leads, honestly. <laughs> Jeremy, if we don't, um, we're, um, we Who create is more a demand. Good fit for you? A lot of our clients are like 20 plus million dollar companies. Um, there are some smaller ones. Our smallest, fastest projects are $45,000. And our typical projects are more like 70, 80, 90K. Uh, they take 500 plus hours from six specialists on average. Uh, these are 20 week projects. Uh, and our clients have very high expectations for ranking in search engines and turning visitors into leads. So I've been on a gazillion podcast and it's really nice that you asked that question. <laughs> I've never had the chance to answer that uh, sort of on a show, but um, that's the ideal client profile. Not, they're not specific to an industry, yeah. Um, but they're a mature business with uh, serious expectations for ROI from digital. Yeah. And you could tell, we're going to go through, I plucked out, I mean, I know a lot of these brands actually on your website. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of, I don't think it's just because I'm in Chicago, but there are some like Lou Malnati's and Home Run and Pizza and some of those mm -hmm. like fan favorites. Um, but we'll go through a few here. And, you know, I want to give a shout out to Matt Inglet from Tilted Pixel who introduced us, even though we are in each other's backyard. I know, and, how did uh, we not have known each other? And yeah. um, so check out the episode I did with Matt, but that was that was great. And thanks, Matt, for introducing us. Um, and before we get into, and we'll dig in some of the sites also, um, talk about the thought process and the decision about a certified B Corp. Uh, well, it's an easy choice for us because uh, I'm an environmental alarmist. Uh, we are, this is a, uh, an interesting and, and very concerning time to be alive. Um, it's not just in, environmental issues, issues of social justice, um, issues of, uh, just big time picture, big picture societal issues. Um, the wealth gap, lack of transparency, um, lack of equity. So it's just something that as soon as we heard about it, um, we pursued it. And we were one of the first B Corps in Illinois. We've been a B Corp for a very long time. I'd have to go look it up, 10 plus years. Uh, it's, it's getting to be a bigger movement now. I think it has more recognition, but uh, the B Corps believe that business can be a force for good. And we prioritize the triple bottom line of people, profit, and planet. Uh, we seek to be sustainable and transparent and equitable in, in, all, in every relationship with our client and our teams. And it matters a lot. It's important. Yeah. So um, let's go. And, and I do at some point um, 
and you want to hear some of your favorite books. You know, you mentioned breakthrough advertising, things like that. So we will get into that because I know that you are not only a teacher, but a student, a student of this as well. And you could see, like, I went through, I don't know how many pages and pages there are, because I went through, I think, five pages and they were still going of these portfolio pages. And I just was like, what, what looks interesting, you know, to me, you know, that can kind of represent a certain uh, type of business. And there's like the health, health type mm -hmm. of business. So I, I pulled out advanced dermatology and mm -hmm. I'd love for you to talk through um, some of the pieces and, and thought process that went into this. Sure. Uh, unlike our classic clients, which are, you know, websites in support of B2B lead gen programs, uh, advanced dermatology, you mentioned home run in Lumonati's I mentioned earlier, Vanna beef. These are actually business to consumer brands, um, which have very different challenges. Uh, a lot of, uh, B2C companies are really prioritizing top line visibility and brand awareness. Um, they have, there's, there's very little middle of funnel content. These aren't companies that have podcasts, for example. You know, you, this is a format we're in now that is really strong at, at uh, growing, um, at deepening relationships. So the B2C companies tend to be, they're, they're, they're more likely to be a transactional decision. But we love them for a, a bunch of reasons. Uh, this was a very early client uh, in our history. This, was, this is uh, going back, I don't know, 15 years. This is a, a website we've designed over and over again. I think this was the third generation of the site that we got to build. Like it's the ultimate uh, um, compliment a client can That's pay. That's pretty cool. How are you again? Yeah. Yeah. This is one of those sites where we've done it three times over the years, which is speaks a lot, not just in the design process and the strategy and outcomes, but the, um, um, the support team, the ongoing help, right? No one comes back and hires you again if you didn't take care of them in the, in the interim between website projects. Um, but it's a, it's a, a beautiful site that generates lots of leads. Uh, the SEO strategy was to build pages that are relevant to both the conditions and the treatments, mm. because there are people who are simply problem aware, uh, and there yeah. are other people who are both problem and solution aware. So to capture both of those types of visitors, you need to have, in this example, uh, pages about skin conditions and pages about skin treatments. Yeah, you can see if you're listening to it, we're looking at the page. So I would, I would, you know, recommend, you know, going to Inspired Insider and watching the video, but you could see there's uh, acne, skin cancer, you know, they list all these different uh, rosacea, you know, probably common things that people come to them with. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear, Andy, because I know you are big and deep in the analytics. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have, uh, a title of your new book, whenever you come out with it, not separate from the one you have from, from my research. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cause I love this line that you say, and you call it the report of broken dreams. I don't know if mm. you came up with that or, or whatever, but that'd be a great title. Maybe the, and then the tagline is, you know, how to, you know, whatever with your website, but I love the report <laughs> of broken dreams. You go deep in analytics and you show this at one point of here are the broken dreams, right? You show links where people are just, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Um, so I love to, and you probably, the reason I mentioned that is because when you go from first generation to second generation website to third generation, you're probably looking at the Linux and you need to revamp things. So sure. I don't know if you remember, but if there's some things that you remember from either first to second or second to third that you're like, okay, here's what we're seeing now. We got to, we got to revamp this. Yeah. Job one is to do no harm. So any website that's been around for a while is getting traction from something, almost certainly getting traction from something. So preserving existing rankings is a really important part of our job. And to do that, you need to first identify the pages that have equity in search um, in one of two ways. Either they rank and attract visitors or they have links from other websites, uh, uh, building the website's authority. And so there is a big audit in a giant spreadsheet where you have to, you have to record everything that's working on that current site. And then carefully make your decisions about whether or not to change URL structure. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of companies that just go ahead and like, oh, we've got a new content management system. So let's completely change all the addresses of all these pages. Big problem, <laughs> but huge, huge mistake, almost always huge mistake. Um, so that's do no harm, preserve, you know, meet the baseline. But then to capture new opportunities, you're going to research new key phrases. And this is an industry, uh, dermatology is when there's innovation. There's new products, there's new, new procedures and techniques and treatments. So uh, 
that comes from qualitative research, really interviewing the client, understanding the trends and deciding how to prioritize. As I mentioned, web design is about building a visual hierarchy that prior that aligns with the messaging priority. So you got so then you know how to prioritize the content. So some of it is analytics. Yes. Yeah, some of it is literally talking to the doctors. Do you remember anything that was a profound change from version two to three? I'm not sure if you remember. Uh, I was not super involved with this project, but I remember it being in in some of the meetings where they were there was a lot of discussion around new types of treatments. Mm. Um, it's like I don't know, microdermabrasion or something, and like it wasn't as much of a thing 20 years ago um, and 15 years ago when we first met them and started working together. Yeah. So I think some of that. Also, there's sometimes just business strategy changes. So they had launched a a, a a skincare brand and um, that worked well for a time and then became less important over time. So that became, that moved down in visual prominence. Um, so it's, it was a, uh, you know, all the photography changed, they had redone their office. So um, there was, you know, the visual assets all needed to be updated. Yeah. Uh, things Talk like that. About... Also mobile. Oh, okay, go ahead. Well, uh, there were no, there was no such thing as mobile responsive design when we first designed this. So making sure there's a tappable phone number at the top of the page, if you're on a phone was, was, um, you know, something that, um, you know, became important far after we originally designed the, the site in the first generation. That's how long you've been doing this. You're like there were no mobile phone. No, it's just like, uh, um, yeah, pretty smart. I mean, you know, we, well, we started this in 2001. So that was still the era when there were flash animations and skip intros on websites. Um, talk about, you know, I reference Report of Broken Dreams. Give a little context to that. Yeah, if, you, um, if your site, I mean, you could apply that, you could say that about several reports. It's basically any report that shows, that, uh, that gives you clues into the ways in which your site is unsatisfying to visitors. The, the, the time when I first thought of calling it that was when I was doing analysis on someone's site search reports. That's a little search box you've got on your website. So if you have it analytics set up properly, you can see what people searched for. And uh, it's in the search terms report. So behavior site search, search terms. And in that report, if you scroll over to the right, you can see percent search exits. So if, people, if, if a lot of people search for a key phrase, but then the percent search exits is high, that means people are searching for that phrase, but then leaving before they click on anything. So if the mm. visitor isn't clicking on a search result after searching for a key phrase, there probably isn't a good search. You know, they're not seeing what they need. So go search for every phrase in your search terms report and ask yourself, have you satisfied for this visitor's intent? And if not, you found a, you know, a gap in your content or you, know, you need to rename something, you're calling it something weird that they don't call it. So that idea of report of broken dreams is just uh, one of the several places in analytics where you can see ways in which your site is unsatisfying um, because there's a, a content gap or some friction, something that frustrates people. Another example, Jeremy, is if you go to the, if you have an FAQ page and you look it up in, this is, um, I'm remembering, I'm picturing analytics in my mind, behavior, site, content, all pages, and then go to the FAQ page and click on navigation summary if you see which of your pages is sending people to the FAQ page, mm -hmm. you know that those are pages that have uh, content gaps. There's an unanswered question there. People would prefer not to go to your FAQ page. They'd rather have the, the answer right in front of them. So the navigation summary, previous page path for your FAQ page is also a kind of a report of broken dreams. So consider that for your next book title or maybe- <laughs> You maybe, like that one? Uh, yeah, I do. Analytics. <laughs> Maybe it's the um, the subhead. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so the other one I pulled up um, that I thought was interesting was the Pat Tillman uh, one. And um, when it loads up here, we'll take a look at it. But, um, you know, again, because we talked about the medical space and now this is like a big foundation. So I thought mm -hmm. I'd love for you to just talk about the thought process with this. I love this conversation. We're talking about everything but B2B lead gen, which is awesome. You're, you're, uh, this is unlike so many conversations I have on chat. Uh, yeah, so this is a foundation. Uh, this is a well-funded foundation. They're, they're pretty well established. So in these examples, um, you're not just building a site that is, um, it's not like a small scrappy program. These guys are making big impact. So the Pat Tillman Foundation is, uh, has all kinds of programs. Uh, there's all kinds of content on this site. 
uh, it has a uh, high levels of, you know, relatively high levels of traffic so far. It's not like a live strong thing, but um, it's kind of on that path. So uh, it was an honor to work with them. We do work with nonprofits. In fact, we do a B Corp type of stuff again. Uh, we do a pro bono project every year. This year it's for Chicago Cred. So uh, we give away, we've given away together with partners, I think $800,000 worth of marketing services over the years. Um, it's just a good thing to do. Uh, even if I was being greedy and selfish about it, I, I would do it because it's, um, uh, the, you know, the team loves these projects. These are, these are, in, this is impact. This stuff matters. Um, but this was, uh, uh, in some ways, you know, not a small scrappy site. They had strong visual assets. They had a lot of, a, a big body of work already. They have good writers. There's a, you know, a team of savvy marketers there. So, uh, it was, um, it was a fun project in a lot of ways. It's like any nonprofit, you know, how do you trigger donations? What are the stories that trigger emotion and drive behaviors? But it was, um, um, it's one of those nonprofits that we were just thrilled to work with. Yeah. And we'll get to the B2B lead gen conversation, I promise. But um, like <laughs> yeah. Um, but talk about, you know, you know, you mentioned in the past, I know you mentioned breakthrough advertising. Are there any other works that you really go back to is foundational for you or anything lately that you mm. you've been consuming? Well, there are uh so these are some of the classics. Uh I really got into content marketing not long after reading Ann Handley's content rules. Uh, I understood content marketing much better after reading Joe Polizzi's Content Inc. When he mentions the tilt, he calls mm -hmm. it. Now he's got a, a new brand called the tilt, um, but it's yeah. about differentiating your content, targeting different things. Um, and then yeah, you spoke I, at his, uh, I think you've, speaking, you've spoken at his conference before. I've had him on the podcast. Yes, yeah, smart Joe? guy. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been a speaker um, at Content Marketing World for many years. Uh, and then really anything by Mark Schaefer. Um, He's almost gone beyond marketing. I mean, this, you know, he, he published um, Known, which is about personal branding and uh, Marketing Rebellion, which is just a strong foundation um, that just explains why things are the way they are in marketing. Um, but his latest is called Cumulative Advantage, which is not necessarily even a marketing book. It's kind of a big picture business book. So uh, my book is more like a how-to. It's like a reference guide. It's not going to inspire anybody, but it tells you how to do everything. Um, those three books I mentioned are really uh, the things that put a lot of us on the right path. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't spur people to take action when it teaches you how to do things. So it's, I'm sure, you know, yeah. people love that. Um, and what I want to talk about, you know, again, we talked about digging into the analytics and we're going to get to, uh, again, like if you're looking at this, there's so many, I'm on page three of their portfolio. There's, there's pages and pages of this, but um, I know we talked about mind tickle. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, you know, I want to, at some point end in the conversation of, you know, some tools and software that you utilize. Cause I saw one video where you showed someone their eye movements and, you know, where, where our mouse goes is different from our eye movements as well. But talk uh, first a little bit about, um, I mind tickle. Sure. Uh, it not a brand that most people have heard of, uh, but there are there are a, a well established fast growing company big company they do sales readiness software so it's sales onboarding sales training managing sales assets uh, and they were going through a rebrand during the web design which isn't that strange but it it adds some interesting challenges uh, and we had to kind of thread this needle of it's being uh, specific enough for the visitor to know like clever versus clear specific enough for the visitor to know where they are and that this is a a good option for them. Uh, but broad enough to start their, them imagining how much better things could be. So it's a very careful combination of visuals and text. Uh, things like, you know, be, the, the headline here is be ready to create sales excellence. Revenue leaders trust MyTickle sales readiness platform, a category leader in that. And that's a known thing, actually. I, I, I wasn't familiar with it. But as you scroll down this page, it has, it checks so many of the boxes. There's evidence, in this case, data. You can see the numbers building. This video uh, that, that uh, without even having to go to a second page, you can begin to get your demo right here uh, in, the, um, in the second page block, right on top of the homepage almost. And then there's, um, uh, as you flow down, there's pictures of the team, there's screenshots of the software. The different use cases are in like this little carousel with different options. Page blocks we call interrupters. Um, there's uh, the content is promoted here. It's sort of 
uh, a minor masterpiece of one of those sites that both answers the visitor's top questions, again, emulating a sales conversation, and shows evidence to support those, those answers. Uh, answer evidence, answer evidence, call to action. That's the general structure of a high performance B2B lead gen site. How do you, um, again, what are some of the tools you like to use to analyze? Well, the tools are always used in the service of a specific use case, usually answering a question. So for example, this you're scrolling down and you can see how many, you see a bunch of logos, their client logos. What percentage of visitors to this page see those logos? Well, Hotjar has a scroll heat map that shows you what percentage of people on average make it down to the how far on each page. Very useful. How do people use the navigation? Are there anything in the navigation that's adding just visual noise without getting clicked? Ah, as I mentioned, the Google Analytics and the navigation summary, you can see what people click and what people don't click. That'll help you. Uh, as I said, you're in a smaller view. This is more like a tablet or mobile view. What percentage of visitors are on mobile? Shows in analytics. What percentage of uh, uh, visitors are, see a second page? What's the most popular path? Oh, Jeremy, here's a simple one. If your website were a city, there'd be a highway flowing through it. And if it was a city, you'd know exactly, right? Like the Edens, you know exactly where the highways are. Most people have no idea what the top path is through their website. How can you do marketing? How do you know where to put, you know, where to put the billboards if not on the highways? So uh, everyone should take a look at the navigation summary from their homepage, look at the next page path reports, or look at the behaviors flow report, and 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 just have a good understanding. Like if it was a retail store, you'd see where people are going, what aisles are crowded, what aisles are empty. But but a lot of people, uh, you know, have websites and they really don't know the performance of their navigation or where their visitors are tend, uh, tend to go, when people hit the back button. Uh, what's the best content on your site that's getting missed? Very important. You were mentioning, I was watching the video where you were you know, kind of talking over someone with the eye movement. And I thought it was interesting. You, you made a couple of points about when people get confused, where they start to look. Yep. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I have an eye tracking rig. It's a little, it's a little like a double camera that, that is, magnetically attached to the bottom of the monitor. So you put someone in your chair, you calibrate it for their eyes in the position of their, of their face, and then you hit record and it records the, their voice, their face, their mouse cursor movements. And this gray blob starts flying around the screen when you play back the recording uh, of where their eyes went. And some things just immediately jump out at you when you watch these recordings. People's eyes move extremely fast, much faster than the mouse. People tend not to read. I can tell you, you know, if I'm doing an uh, analysis on your site with a mini focus group or a hallway study, you sometimes call it, I can tell you what people read and what they don't. <laughs> I can tell you what people skip, how far they, you know. So uh, yes, eye tracking tools are uh, really valuable and powerful UX tools. Not always relevant. Some, a lot, lot of sites, it's, it's, it's um, the results are not very conclusive, but it's definitely true that the eye moves much faster than the mouse. Really, we don't move the mouse until, we're mo until we've got a good sense for what we want to click on. Yeah, and you're saying the person was getting confused. So are there certain sections of the website um, that people should really look at improving because of, I mean, people are bound to get confused with the website regardless of how good uh, it is, right? So. Yeah, the, there's a, a lot of research on this. The number one reason why websites are uh, fail is because the visitors uh, unable to find important information. So it, they're not there to see pretty pictures. They're not there to check to see what color palette you used. They're not there to watch a video per se. They're looking for an information. So with that in mind, uh, you know any page that fails to answer a question, you'll see the eyes jump start to jump around quick. Right, they're scanning, 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 trying to find something that that they think will, um, you know, satisfy their information needs. Again, there's a true story in the life of every visitor to every web page. If you don't know what that is, you really don't know how to write your site. <laughs> you don't know how to make a page. And if and once and then the next level of thinking is yes, you answered their question, but now put a witness in the witness box. Right, add a testimonial to support the answer you gave. That's really the difference. Bad sites. It's very generic. 
They don't give much information. There's no specificity. The images are stock photos. There's nothing on the page that is unique to that brand. And that's where so many websites fall down. Yeah. I went on a, a stint of interviewing some of the top copywriters, direct response marketers, mm -hmm. and they would say exactly, all of them would echo that 100%, which is like, do you have support for everything that you're saying? Do you have proof? Do you have yep. scientists or studies or research or something, testimonials saying, backing up what you're saying? Reasons yeah. to believe. Um, I want to break down a couple pages for a second and maybe start with, you know, serv their service page checklist. What are a few things people should think uh, about when they're um, creating their mm. service page? Well, so at the, starting from the top, you would say that it would have a, a header that answers people's questions about where I, where am I? Am I in the right place? Uh, that also tends to check the second box, which is, is the page keyword focused? Does it tell the search engine what the page is all about? Uh, as you scroll down past that, I think it's really, really helpful to have quick visual credibility, logos of clients or awards that you've won or something that just shows that you're legit, right? That differentiates you. That feels a bit separate. Other things to include, data is a type of visitor who's very affected by, by numbers, right? And the site has to work for everyone. So is there data to support your case? Are there testimonials with quotes around them to support your case? Are you showing pictures of your team? Is, uh, we already said, is, this, is the page answering visitors' top questions? Uh, and then you know, when you get into the minutia of it, there's just um, a, a classic flaw in websites is that they have subheads above, above a section but that the subhead says almost nothing at all. Like there are an embarrassingly, you know, an embarrassing number of websites that have a subhead that says what we do. You don't need to say that. <laughs> that doesn't add any value. That doesn't answer any questions. It doesn't mean anything. Why not just say what you do? <laughs> you know, podcast, you know, management, production, promotion, something like that, instead of writing the three words, what we do. Same for navigation labels. Why would you have a navigation label that says what we do? Why not just... Expand your navigation so that at a glance, the visitor can scan through and see the list of things that you do. Unless you're such a massive company that you can't, you know, you need to have um, a really generic label and inside there's piles of sub-navigation. So uh, yeah, there's uh, some sites fail because they, they're thin content, not enough detail. Some pages fail because there's no calls to action. What is the path? What do you want this person to do? Um, so yeah, the, the next level down from answers, evidence, and call to action is uh, you know, faces, data, social proof, calls to action, meaningful subheaders, keyword focus, depth, deep depth and detail, descriptive navigation labels. Um, and then at, you know, cap it all off at the bottom with a, a fat footer, they call it, a footer with lots of sub-navigation inside it because the visitor maybe didn't find what they were looking for. You can send them, you know, give them more, more options to, con to convert or contact or click down there in the footer. Uh, that's sort of, that's at a very high level. Those are the key ingredients for a uh, high performing B2B service page. Thanks for running through that. And I love what you said about what we do. I remember I had um, Kevin Rogers is a copywriter and he calls it clearing your throat. And oh. like, you know, people clear their throat sometimes, whether it's uh, in their website or in an email, and they could probably cut out the first couple sentences. They're just starting to introduce what they're saying. So I love that you you mentioned that because I'm I'm sure we do that on our site and don't even realize it. But um, the the other one I want to talk about we'll we'll talk about this one um, Adam Street Partners in a second. But I love your thought process on the thank you page and what makes an awesome thank you page. Specifically, even what happens after you you know hit contact. So talk about the mistakes people make with that. Yeah. I can summarize the goal of all digital marketing. Uh, it, it sounds something like this. Build a bridge from a traffic source to your thank you page. Everything we do, right? All the publishing and all the formats, all the writing and all the pages, every, you know, everything you record and write and, and, and design. It's all in service of that, bringing them to that final thank you page. Uh, that's what, that's literally the definition of success. When you set up Google analytics is the destination of the goal, the conversion, the person took action. They were a visitor, now they're a subscriber, now they're a registrant, now they're a, a lead or an e-commerce customer. Yet so many sites fail to do anything interesting on their thank you pages at all, even though that is the first moment when you're communicating with your new prospect, roll out the red carpet, 
put on the white gloves, <laughs> welcome them, tell them when you'll be in touch, tell or, or give them some, some other action to take. Uh, you know, your thank you page, the person just filled out a contact form. They're at their peak of interest. They're past the psychological hurdle of interest. So now offer them a second conversion, subscribe to our newsletter, follow us on social media. The click-through and conversion rates are very high. We have around 300 visitors a year who fill out our contact form and then immediately subscribe to our newsletter. It's amazing. It's like free subscribers. So if nothing else, you know, make sure there's links to your, your highest value content. Another way to say it, find and remove every dead end on your website. <laughs> Thank you, Paige, is probably one of them. Yeah, thanks for going in detail on that because I thought that was a, a fantastic insight. Uh, AdamStreetPartners.com. Walk me through this one. So this is a, their header says, global leader in private markets, which is a, a strong assertion um, and a, uh, the, in the category, private equity, private markets, private capital. So uh, do, do they stand behind that? Is, do they have data to support that? Yes, they do. 50 pixels away, <laughs> there is a 49 billion in assets under management, 50 years of being in business, 490 direct investment. Like, so this is, um, it's very, it, you, you immediately, before you even touch the scroll bar, you can't help but see the top of the visual hierarchy is powerful quantitative evidence. Um, the call to action right there is view the strategies and solutions because that's, the next level of thinking is how or what. You want to see the, the service they offer. Below that, there's what you call an interrupter page block. It's like overlaps two different background colors. That is promoting content. And they have uh, interviews with economists and thought leaders that they're promoting high on the page. They need to do that because like a lot of your clients, Jeremy, this is a, a mid of the, middle of the funnel content's important. You don't just suddenly just, you know, you're not going to invest $50 million with a click. <laughs> You're going to have to have some conversations first. You need to see some evidence. Um, recent insights is next. Uh, they have a partnership with The Economist that you'd see if you drilled into that. Then, then they get into the, the strategies, co-investment, growth equity, private inv primary investments, private, private credit. So anyway, um, when you every, every click is in fact segmentation. That's a good way to think about navigation. You want, to seg you want the visitor to self-segment the pages where you can speak to them more specifically. And so it's on those deeper pages that go into the philosophy and the methodology and more evidence and the team. So all over this site, you're going to find people. If you go to the dropdowns are also a thing of beauty. If you hover over strategies and solutions and go to, say, co-investments on the far left, uh, you're going to see their approach to that. And then right below that, you're going to, we're going to start showing off their people. Because that's the difference. That's what you need to know before you give a company piles of, you know, you trust them with your family's wealth. So what are the backgrounds? What do they think? So right here, there are the faces, professionally done headshots. They're the names. You can click to go into each of their bios, which describe their uh, education, their, their years in business, their expertise, their industry expertise, industry focus. So it's both a site that is uh, sparkling with uh, strong evidence, but also uh, very human. It's filled with people. And that's a big differentiator, as we already said. It's a, uh, a website without faces. Uh, it just looks sketchy now. <laughs> it's not, it's, it, you got a problem if you don't show, uh, put someone on there. And I'm not talking about stock photos. I mean, real people. I love it. First of all, uh, Andy, this is fantastic. I, I appreciate you sharing your wealth of knowledge with everyone. I want to point people towards if they want to learn more, if they know someone who obviously uh, needs this, uh, orbitmedia.com and just opt in. I mean, he puts out content after content piece. It's, you know, just giving value and delivering value to people. So check it out and um, check out more episodes of Inspired Insider. Check out Rise 25. And Andy, I want to be the first one to. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, nice like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.